all right so in today's video i'm gonna go through how i got to item level thousand in a week i will cover everything i did since i hit level 50 and all the way to tier 3 so as soon as you hit level 50 you might already be at north Vern, but that is the next step for you to take so you will just continue to do the blue well quest in north Vern, and when you get done with Vern, you will get a power pass in the mail what i did there was to boost one character to level 50 and it will actually come with tier 1 gear as well. And then when you boosted the first character, you will actually get another power pass in the mail as well. So at that point, I will have 3 level 50s with the tier 1 gear. And the power pass will come in the mailbox right here. I think it's definitely worth that 1 to 2 alts as early as you can. Since they do get the tier 1 gear. And you only have to play them once every 3 days. And the sooner you get that, the sooner you will get that rested bonus stacked. And of course the materials you alt gets you use to pump your main. We will go into more detail on that later in the video though. So don't really worry about that. So when North Vern is cleared your next step is Shushire. And you will actually do the same thing as you did on North Vern but on Shushire. So you will do the blue well quest here as well. And when you're done with that you will get your awakening skill. And also your level 50 skill. Which in my case as a death blade was void strike. On top of that, when you clear Shushire, you also get a full tier 1 gear set, which is 301. So that basically puts you right at the start of the end game. So as long as you have some time for the resets, I would go on an island trip. And what that basically means, like if you look at the map here, around the world here, you have a lot of different islands, as you can see. And a lot of these will actually give you a lot of materials, so you can upgrade your gear, and then further on increase your item level. So I will link you this document right here that I personally used. And also we got this from Maxroll, which does show you an optimal route to take to clear all the islands. However, if you're close to reset, for me the reset is actually in 40, 37 minutes at 11 a.m. So if that would be the case, I would not do the islands first, but I would do the dailies and weeklies. Which we will get into later as well. So in case you don't know where to find the islands, you can actually search them here on the map. So for instance here, Lullaby Island is a really important one to do and that should have really high priority. I'm not going to be going through all the islands though, but I think it's worth to mention this one. As I said, just check the link in the description and you can get the spreadsheet and also the map route and just follow that one. Because if I would just cover that, I think the video just get too long. But yeah, you search on the map there, you can find Lullaby Island right here. And the reason you want to do this one is because one of the quests you actually need to do three times. And it is an event quest. And as you can see here, co-op quest begins 1.20 a.m., 3.20 a.m., 5.20 a.m. So basically every two hours. So if you look at the events here, you can see right here that we have Lullaby Island. So you just make sure you enable the alarm there. And yeah, it's actually four minutes. So you don't miss it. So that's why this one is really important to do. And also another really good island that's, that is insane on materials. Which is Dream Goal. You do need a song that you get from Lullaby Island. Which is Forest Minute. But you could do the first part on this island before you get that though. And it's insanely good materials and really really fast. Worth to note as well when you are doing the Lullaby Island quest. Is that you can press Alt W, which takes out the Bifrost menu here, and you can just save location and you save it to Lullaby Island. And the cooldown for this is uh, two hours. If you have the Crystalline Aura, which is like the monthly premium, you will get two additional ones here, which is really, really good. Talking about islands, though, you are gonna be using your ship. And in case you didn't watch my last video, which went through the ship and the store, and maybe you missed some of these videos as well can always check those out but in case you didn't watch that one a really good beginner tip right here is that you press up the map you type in the island like this you can see it ping right there and you press alt and then mouse one or you hold alt and mouse one and you can set up points here where it will go and then you just cancel route and do it again you can basically go afk and with this boat i have here it's insanely good for afk for AFKing and being efficient because they have a chance to refresh the fast sailing and it will automatically use it as soon as you set the route. You can check the video on the screen right here if you want to know how to get that. But the reason we are here though is for this vendor right here. He sells uh, pirate coins. 
If you want to buy pirate coins for these, which you get in boxes, you should convert them to sun coins because you get 20, while this one you only get 10. You would go to normal tab here, and here you can buy tier 1 materials and tier 2 materials, weekly cap. Because when you hit the end game, it's going to be all about upping your item level, and that's basically what this guide is going to focus on. So I'm just going to show you all the ways that I got all the materials to get there quicker. So if you've done the islands or maybe the reset is coming very soon or you're gonna go off for the day, there is some stuff you definitely should be doing before you log off. And one of them would be Chaos Dungeon, which is right here. So Chaos Dungeon is extremely good just to get materials. And this is something you definitely want to do daily. I try to save the Chaos Dungeon for last. I want to pump up my item level as high as I can before I do it. Because then you can possibly do higher level Chaos Dungeon, which will give you more materials. So Chaos Dungeon you can do twice. If you have alts, you get rest bonus right here up to 3 days. So you want to clear the least once every 3 day on your alt. Then of course you can just use the remote storage here. Like I put all the materials here on my alts. And then I can use them on any other character. Then we also do have Guardian Raids. Which is pretty similar to, to Monster Hunter. To progress through here though you do have to clear them all. But let's say your item level would be a bit higher. You can still just enter and then you disable this one and it won't use your your two harvest uh, souls which are like the daily currency you will not get as much reward though but that's a good way to progress through if for example your item level is high and you have neglected this and this is like also a good way to get materials and accessories as you can see then we also have uh, daily tasks if you press alt j you will get this one up you can do three of these every day so depending on islands and stuff, you will have more unlocked here, maybe less. So what I like to do here is to actually do the same ones every single day. Yeah, I know it's kind of repetitive, but it's actually really beneficial. But if we take up my Bifrost here, so you can see the locations I have right here. So Runaway Island is really good in my opinion, because there is two daily tasks there and it's really quick to actually do them. And you can also... Keep in mind if you're doing dailies, especially on Runaway Island, it's really good to swap channel to, to try to get an empty one because it will just go faster. So basically you set up uh, Bifrost for your dailies and whenever you're going to do them, you just teleport there, do them and it's really, really efficient. What I like to go for for the dailies and think is the best is the Leap Stones. Yeah, this is Life Leap Stone, which is tier 2. If you are tier 1, you will have the tier 1 Leap Stone. You can also do this if you need the life shards or harmony shards. This is just the tier 2 equivalent of it. But preferably, most of the time, I do think leap stones are the best. So do free dailies every day. So that's basically the dailies. You also do have weekly tasks here as well. I personally, this week and the week before, I have been doing the, the PvP ones, as you can see right here. They do give decent reward and I kind of want to get more into PvP. So I think that's a good way to actually get some rewards for PvP. Because currently there's no rewards at all when it comes to PvP. You also do have the, the rep status here. You can look here and when it fills up you can claim some silver. And that's about it when it comes to Yuna's tasks. Something else when it comes to weeklies though is the Abyssal Dungeon. Which is actually super super fun to do. And if we look at the rewards here. This is for tier 2 though. But you can see you actually do get gold from this one. And the rewards are pretty damn good for this. So you definitely want to try to do the Abyssal Dungeon for your tier once a week. Like for me being tier 2, there's no reason to do tier 1. You see it's unobtainable for me to, to do it. So whatever item level you are, you will unlock more of this. So if you are at tier 1 for example and have all of them unlocked. So you can do each one once per week. So you can may do this one. This one, this one, and this one, if you have all the tier 1s unlocked. So when you do the Abyssal Dungeon, you will be getting some currencies. And you want to look at this guy right here, as you can see on the minimap. And you go to this guy, and you can use the currency to actually craft gear sets with it. As you can see, I actually do have some tier 1 materials, because I didn't actually use this while, while I was in tier 1. And yeah, like these have 2 set bonus. They also have 5 set bonus. And the higher rarity, the better they basically get. And if you pick up this, you don't have to worry about you going down in item level. Because you will just transfer your current gear 
into this new gear and it will keep you at the same item level then something else that i think is really worth to mention it is the tower so the tower goes from floor 1 to 50. there's also one tower which is called shade spare which is the tier 1 tower you also have a tier 2 one which is uh, fate spire they basically work the same way as there are different tiers but if we focus on the tier 1 here you can see that i actually get materials here and the reason I i'm getting materials on uh, the eighth first floor and if you look later on there's no materials here right and that's because i did the first eight floors on my alt because the first time you run it you will get these type of roster bound items but the second time you do it you will actually get materials so what you can do here is to use your alts and do as much as you can in the tower and when it's done all the other characters that will do this will be getting tons of materials as you can see and sure, you might not boost your alt to super high item level. Like as you can see, I only did floor 8 with my alt. And then I didn't need to do it anymore. But I do think it's really worth to mention this though. Because you should be clearing this one once anyway. So you get the skill point potion. And these are roster bound as well. So you don't have to worry about that. All the characters will get that. So whenever I'm going to be boosting my alts now, they're going to be getting a lot of materials just through here. So that's going to make it even easier for me to get materials done. Something else you can do for upgrade materials is to actually be in a guild. As you can see though, I am not in a guild. But if you are, you can go here on the map. And you can go to this bloodstone exchange thing. And then you can go to the awning materials. And as you can see, you can trade the bloodstones for materials weekly. You can see the weekly limit. It's kind of low, but it's still nice to get a little bit of extra one for barely any effort at all. You just have to donate silver and stuff like that in the guild. Since I don't have one, I don't know too much about it. I just thought it was worth to mention. So when you have done a lot of the islands and maybe you've done the dailies and weeklies like Guardian Raids, Chaos Dungeon, Yuna's Tasks and so on. You're going to be using all the material for gear running. You can find that on the map right here. You can see on the minimap there. You get this menu right here. Now sadly I don't have any materials so i can't really show you so basically what you do you fill this one up this one you never have to repay and yeah i can't press gear running though but you will get an option and you will have a chance to fail but the first six ones i believe it's 100 percent success rate so it's actually pretty easy to reach 460 item level but later on though you have an option to fail and i was extremely unlucky on tier one I actually did fail 33 times until I got to 600, which is pretty crazy. So whenever you hit 460, it's time to go to Rohendel. This is going to be the same as it was with Vern and Shushire. So you basically just do the blue quest line here. And this will also give you some materials. It will unlock Chaos Dungeon, Abyssal Dungeon, and so on for that higher item level. And when you're done with Rohendel, you will get a purple quest, which will give you your second awakening skill. It is really, really long though. It's like four to six hours or something. And honestly, I think this was the most boring part in the game. But you do want to get your second awakening skill. And you only have to do this once. So yeah, just do it because it will be worth it. So when you're done with that awakening quest, or if you skipped it and do it later, you just keep doing what I said before. Maybe if you have some islands left for materials, you would do that. And if you, if you don't have that, just keep doing the other stuff I mentioned before, like Chaos Dungeons, Tower, and so on. And you will easily hit 600 item level. When you hit 600 item level, though, it is time to go to Yorn, which is the first area for tier 2. So you basically just do the same thing here as you did at Rohendel. You, you clear the quest line of the blue quests. And when you're done with that, the different here is, though, compared to tier 1, is that you're not going to get a chest with a full tier 2 set which is 802 gear score now you actually have to do chaos dungeon so you would go here on Jorn and you would be doing this one right here which is recommended 600 item level and this will drop you 802 item level so do two of those and you should be getting all of these if you somehow get extremely unlucky you could just buy them at the auction house i don't think they're too expensive so that could be the last resort right there so at that point, your 802 gear score, you just basically do the same thing that you did in tier 1. You just do the islands for the materials. It's not going to be as much materials as tier 1 there, but it's still quite a lot. Like it took me from, what, 800 to 1k almost instantly. And then you just keep doing the dailies and weeklies. 
And you keep that up and you will hit the 1100 item level. And then it's time to go to the next island. Something else that is worth to mention. If you have a founder's pack, you will have currencies right here. And you could buy from Mari's secret shop some tier 2 and tier 1 materials. I wouldn't really use this that much though. But if you really want to up your item level, you could have a look here and see if you can buy anything. But let's say you're like 1000 item level on everything except one item. And that is locking you out from doing this one, which is 1000 requirement. So you can only do this one. Then that's like the time I would consider going into the store and getting the last material here needed to push yourself up so you can do the higher chaos dungeon in this instance for more materials. So that's kind of how I would personally use Morris shop. And that's of course because I already have currency from the founder's pack. But yeah, I think that covers most of it. I probably did forget something here because I actually did make this video without a script because people have been requesting this for quite some time. And making this with a script would just take more time than what I have right now. Because I do want to grind the game. But I did really want to cover this to help people out. And I think this was just the best way. And I think the information just comes out here. It might not be as clear. But I actually just wanted to test to do one video like this without a script. Just to see how it would go. But hopefully this was helpful. And if you are interested in more Lost Ark videos then make sure you hit the subscribe button. I do live stream this game on Twitch almost every day, so if something was unclear or you have any questions, feel free to ask me on Twitch. But with that said, i catch you guys in the next video.